Good morning, my faithful, your loyal YouTube subscribers. Today is Wednesday, August the 14th, year 2019. So, I saw a statement, somebody, a comment somebody wrote that uh, friends today are just enemies under construction. And I thought that was very interesting because I've had a lot of my en enemies today, we were once best friends. You know, we were once best friends, laughing and talking and hanging around each other. And all of a sudden, for some odd reason or another, we became enemies. Or the friendship ended and literally we became enemies. And I got to thinking about a friend of mine who, who's deceased now. And I'm looking for the quote I found. It said, there were two quotes. Be careful what you tell people. A friend today could be an enemy tomorrow. And the other quote was, who is this? Um, it's scary to think that your enemy was once your best friend. And I think those quotes are just very significant because, <laughs> y'all, trust me, I have experienced this. People that I was best friends with, and now we we don't we cannot be in the same room together without almost having a physical confrontation. I never forget a few years back, one of my friends, he's deceased now, and we used to hang out every day. I don't know what happened. In the early 90s, we were very close friends, and we were um, hanging out a lot, and going, just all kinds of stuff. We did a lot of, a lot of stuff together, and gradually, um, some things started to happen between he and I, and I couldn't put my finger on why we were having these difficulties why he would um, diss me publicly and say things about me literally to my face. And I'd be like, well, what did I do? You know, but I, as we got older, and I had known him since at least 90, 90, 1990. Uh, but he's deceased now. And gradually, our friendships began to strain. And I never, never had an argument, never had a disagreement. I never knew what the issue was. I mean, but he, I remember one day he came to me and said, you're always smiling and always happy. What are you so happy about? I was thinking, I remember I was sitting in the club having a drink. He just came up and said this to me. And I was thinking, what are you talking about? I'm just standing here having a drink. I'm just enjoying the night. He's like, you're always happy. You find so much happiness in every damn thing. Why are you so fucking happy? And he marked off. And this was a shock to me because I didn't know what the fuck was going on. And then I never forget, and I never questioned him about that because I, I wasn't sure if he was joking, was he serious? Sometimes, and I learned something, that sometimes the comments that people make to your face, we tend to ignore them. But he didn't like the fact that I was happy. And something was going on in his life and he was not happy. So to see me standing there smiling happy, just standing in the club holding a drink, listening to the music and enjoying the view. I like to go and people watch at the clubs. At that time, he didn't like it. And that was a sign to me that something was taking place between he and I that I didn't quite understand. Not too long after that, um, I found out that he was living with HIV. And this was back in the day before undetectable and all this other stuff. And so, um, he was taking his medication that I know of now. And this was at a point in time where there was good medication. We were past the AZT crisis. Um, one of our friends that got sick was in the hospital, and I forget how he told me. But anyway, he let me know that he was living with HIV. This was before social media and all this other stuff was taking place. And I'm trying to think, was detectable around? But I don't know about the detectable part or not, but this part I do know for sure. The medications were helping people to stay alive. And not too long after that, he told me that he was going to try a holistic approach, that he was going to start taking some herbs. I think he said he was going to take some silver something, silver, some silver mess that he had got from some health food store and some something. This was going to cure him of HIV. And I remember saying, um, well, why are you doing that? Silver colonnade or something like that. What was that mess? I never get that mess. It was the first time I ever heard of it. And I even researched it myself because I was trying to figure out what is this man talking about? Uh, it was silver. 
silver colonnade. Silver colla what is this? How do you pronounce this mess? Silver colloidal colloidal silver colloidal silver. I don't even see how you pronounce this. Colloidal silver. It's a liquid. And this was supposed to save his life from HIV. It was supposed to drastically. He was although he was in great health that I knew of and taking his medication. He said he didn't want to take those medicines anymore. He didn't want to do this. And I just kind of we were on the phone talking. And I remember thinking, well, you know, you need to really, you know, research that. There you go again. You're always doing this and saying this and doing that. And I'm thinking, well, all I said was you need to research that. I don't know anything about this product. I said, well, who told you that this product could, 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 could control the HIV virus in your body better than the medicines that you're taking now? And at this point, they were just having the medications, the antiretroviral medication. I don't know. There were billboards around, people were living longer. I know these medicines had improved and people were doing much better. Why would you stop these medications to pursue this? So I didn't say I was for it or against it. I just said you need to do some research, right? When I said that, he cussed me out. Said he called me all these names. I was never a good friend. This just, just, just went, on, went off on me in this tangent. And I remember the whole of the phone thinking, where did all this come from? But it had been building for years. It was nothing I had done. I was just a happy person living my life. Every time he needed something, I was there for him. Every time his car would break down, I'd go pick him up. Every time he needed a car, I told him he had this BMW that was in and out of the shop. He needed a place to stay. We, me and Earl owned a rental property. He actually rented one of Earl's rental properties for, for a while. And... You know, we let him pay his rent when he could pay it. We didn't even push the issue, the idea. He paid his rent. That's something about helping people. Where would this issue come from? You were living in the apartment owned by Earl. You were paying Earl the rent. Earl called me and said, did he have his rent money? I called him to get your rent money. He's like, I got to have it tomorrow, whenever, Friday. Whenever. You know, he, we, were, we were lax about rent due on the first. Sometimes he didn't pay his rent to the 15th or the 20th. Or whenever when he got the money, it was no big deal. Pay it, you know. Sometimes he might have to pay a month or two at a time. We we knew he'd pay it. So all of a sudden I'm getting this cussing out. And I don't know where this has come from. This is kind of painful because I'm like, what have, I, what have I done? I call me names and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden he jumped up and moved out of Earl's apartment and left the state of Georgia. Now, again, I don't know where this was coming from. I hadn't done nothing to him. I even asked question Earl, did you say something? And he said, no, I didn't say nothing to him. He was actually living in this apartment that Earl had and was living with some porn star. A porn actor who's dead now, too. Um, oh, yeah, that boy isn't dead. Um, here's the funny part. The porn actor that he was living with at the time had all these kids. And he was a porn actor. He was known doing all this porn and stuff. But he was that guy... I remember things going over there one time and clicked around. I said, that's looking to see who that was. I was like, and he said, did you say nothing? And I said, I didn't say anything. I, I didn't even, I said, it's that, that guy that does all that porn. He told me they had all these children all over the place. And the child support, he had to pay all his child support. He couldn't really work. He had to work under the table to earn a living because he had so many kids. He was paying child support. He was a porn actor, a gay porn actor. <laughs> so anyway, look, I didn't care. Again, I didn't know what, what the, whether this, 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 the, this. So when I saw that comment that somebody made saying that um, friends are just people who are um, enemies under construction, it touched home because literally every person I once called a friend became an enemy, not because of anything I did to them, only thing I could think of was jealousy, envy, and hate. And I've learned that when you're trying to help people, about us letting him pay his rent late, us letting him move into that apartment without a credit check or a background or a deposit, you think you're helping a friend, but they resent and hating you the whole damn time. Because you can do something for them they cannot do for themselves. 
And they don't like the fact that they have to come to you and even ask you for this type of stuff. Or maybe you, you, you volunteer. I think in this case, we volunteer. Hey, this apartment's empty. It's a big apartment. Could we, you rent it? It was a beautiful apartment. We could have got a lot of money in rent on that place with some white folks who would have paid it. It was an area going through gentrification. We said, hey, do you want it? Because I know you need a place to stay. Go take it. Shit. But he wasn't grateful to me. He, he, he resented this. I mean, that wasn't the first time I've encountered that from friends. I'm a little bit older now. So this was good. This was in the early 2000s. I would say, yeah, 2003, 2004, somewhere up in there. Yeah. Maybe, you know, so it had to be in the 2000s. 2002, 2000, no, it wasn't definitely, it was 2003 or 2004, somewhere up there. And when he left, when he left um, out of the apartment, he took the appliances that did not belong to him. And we were like, well, why did you take the plane with appliances? He claimed he didn't take the appliances. He said the appliances, he left them in there. But other tenants who lived in the same building said he took those appliances with him. There were some stainless steel appliances. He took the appliances with him. So I said, no big deal. We're not going to argue this man over these appliances. We went and brought some more appliances. We went to the apartment back out to somebody else. But he stole the appliances. All of them. The stove, refrigerator, and dishwasher. That didn't belong to him. He took them. And so I remember thinking, trying to find he moved out of state. So it took a while before we finally caught up to him. And what I learned, and there's another issue here. He was HIV positive and he's had stopped taking his medications. He was seeing this porn actor. Um, he just became unstable and kind of crazy to a degree. So it was hard, tough to deal with him. And other friends that we all knew each other, they said the same thing. Like, that nigga crazy now. Why did he stop taking the medication? I said, I don't know. But yeah, he ended up moving out of state. And we never uh, spoke to him to eat, but until he moved back to the state a few years later. Now, now when he came back to the state of Georgia, his appearance had changed drastically. And he came back. And the first thing he said to me was, we discussed those appliances. He said, I'm going to pay you for the appliances. I was going through something at the time. And sure enough, he did pay me back for the appliances. Even though this was a few years after that, he gave me a, he gave me something. We didn't, we did a swap or something. I can't remember because Larry was hustling back then. So he gave me the, something for the appliances. So, um, and I thought, okay, maybe he's doing better now because he was back on his medications. But at that point in time, physically. He had suffered some damage from the silver colloidal, colloidal, whatever it was, um, and it caused some issues. He was having heart problems. There were some things going on. He had, he went to the hospital. That was why he was back in Atlanta because he got sick. And he ended up in the hospital, and, and it was something to do with his heart. And I can't remember what was going on. And they were having to do some stuff. I remember his mother taking him back and forth to the hospital. It had something to do with his heart or something similar to that. So I can't remember. But I know he was back on his HIV medic medications now, so he was physically doing better, but, I, but he had did some damage. He had lost a lot of weight. We used to work out the gym together and all this stuff. But anyway, we never recovered from that event that took place where, and we, and it gets just, and when he back in Atlanta, Things started to get worse because he was back again saying all this bad stuff about me. Now, we had settled up on the appliances, so I thought we were good, but that wasn't good enough. Because he began to, to, to really start this rampage against me. And one of the things I learned from that experience is when you're done with a person and they're left in your past, sometimes it's better off to leave them in the past. Because when he ran up out of Georgia and took those appliances, he he should have been, I should have left him alone from that day forward. And, and when he returned back to Georgia and showed up on my doorstep, I should have immediately 
slammed that door and went on about my business. But he was, I remember he came to the house with some other friends of mine. I'm like, oh, he back. After you done ran about that apartment, the appliances and claimed that you didn't take them. Although everybody else saw you load the appliances on that damn U-Haul. No big deal. The appliances was, you know, but it was just you stole something that didn't belong to you. It belonged to Earl. It was his, his um, particular unit that we were renting out. Oh, raggedy house. I can have that real estate. I wouldn't be bothered with that shit. But anyway, we never recovered from that because I was angry with him about the stuff that he was saying about me. And because all I had ever been to him was a good friend. This was not the only person I had this problem with. Every friend that I've had over the years, every person I called a good friend or best friend, today we do not speak and we are damn near enemies. I hear the stuff that people say about me. Because people will, people can't rush to tell you, but so-and-so said this about you. And like he said, what? They rush to tell you this shit. So I get all this stuff back and I have to stop people. I don't want to hear nothing that I had to say because we don't talk anymore. He said this and he said that. I, said, I don't want to hear it. I just had to tell people, I, I don't want to hear that mess. Well, he, you, 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 I don't want to hear what this person, we're not... We're not like that anymore. I mean, so for me, it's when I, I've learned that when somebody's in your past, it's best to leave them in the past. Don't welcome, welcome them back into your life. You ask them for part two and three of more drama. And every time I've forgiven somebody and said, oh, okay, it was a catastrophe. You better off just for leaving them. I'm not keen on this friendship mess because I really do believe, unfortunately, that a lot of friendships are just really enemies under construction. They sit next to you. They see what you're doing. I mean, a lot of black folks can't be happy for each other. They just can't. The jealousy, the envy, the hate... They don't want you to do well. You think that they want you. You would. I really genuinely. I genuinely, genuinely. I know genuine is not the correct pronounce. Genuine, genuine. Is that right? Yeah. Anyway, I know a lot of people. I know that I really do want people to have the best in life. But unfortunately, I have a good spirit and a good heart and a good soul. But there's some people out there. They don't give a damn about nobody but themselves. And when that man walked up to me in that club and said, why are you always happy? Why are you always smiling happy? I hate that. I don't like that. Because he was having issues in his life that he wasn't happy about. See, I have issues just like anybody else. I handle it differently. I'm going to smile and go on about my business. I'm going to be happy. Some things are beyond my control. And sometimes you got to own up to your own shit. Own up to your own mistakes and what you did to cause this unhappiness in your life. I'm never going to walk up to somebody and say, you happy and smiling. I don't like, you know, but I've learned black folks mentality, and I'm sure it happens in a lot of other races, y'all. But I'm, I mainly deal with black folks from sun up to sundown. You know, you know, you know it's just the truth. But I can imagine it happens in pretty much every race on planet Earth. People don't want you to be happy. Even your own friends and family members. They don't want you to be happy. You would think that they would want you to be I can lie sad my life. I think my mother was genuine, genuinely wants me to be a happy person and happy in life. But after that, if things get real flaky with other people, you know. So I keep my distance from people. I would love to have a house full of friends. We sit here playing cards watching TV, traveling, and going places to do stuff that I've learned. I've learned the hard way. Unfortunately, things don't work out too well. I can tell y'all a bunch of stories like this about people I've done all kinds of stuff for. I think a lot of times the only reason people are in your face around you, or particularly around me, is because what I can do for them, what I bring to the table. If I had nothing to offer, if I can help them with any damn thing, 
If I could help them figure out something or get something, they wouldn't be around here. That's why I had to hit the pause button with this friendship mess. Because it was just, over the years, it wasn't getting better. It just wasn't. And I'm very leery about the whole we friends. So I said, oh, here we go. Because it just doesn't end well with black folks. You, you, I, you genuine, I genuinely would like to have some really good friends that stand by me in my times of need, the way I help them. But it just doesn't work that way. There are very few and far between the fine people who will stand by you when you need some help. So I don't be rushing to help people no more. You know, I got a phone call. The reason why this is a friend of mine, an associate of mine, is in jail. He wants me to put $100 on his books. I'm not doing that. I didn't want, I didn't want to tell him that, but I'm just not doing that. I don't, I don't, you only call me when you need something. When you were ripping one of these sheets of Atlanta, I didn't even exist. When you were having birthday parties and bashes and all this stuff, I wouldn't know about it until the next day. You, you had uh, bowls, tickets to the Super Bowl, you didn't even give me one. Where are all these people that you had all these events and plans and parties and did all this stuff? Where are they? Why are you calling me for a hundred bucks? I'm not great to put no hundred dollars on your books. Not five dollars or ten dollars, you want a hundred dollars. Until he go to court. Where's your mama? Daddy, brothers and sisters, where are they? You know, where? Why are you calling me? Tell me, so you need a hundred bucks. I'm like, oh, what? where is this coming from? I don't have nothing against the man. But we were associates, we're not that close. Like I said, he had tickets to the Super Bowl. A lot, I don't know where he got these tickets from, but he didn't offer me one. But he took some nobodies over there to it. I'm like, how'd you get these tickets? I would have liked him to the Super Bowl. Uh-uh. He took the. He took it. <laughs> didn't offer me nothing. They had a big birthday bash. Nice party. I didn't get an invite. I didn't know about it the next day. Now, I could see if we have not been in communication. But we have been in communication. You didn't tell me anything about oh, this birthday party you had. Catered event and all of that. I would like to have came and got some of that delicious food over there. And I've did stuff for this person on many different occasions. This ain't his first trip to the jailhouse. And this is not his first time being locked up. He's been in jail before. But I'm not about to do that. All these people who go back and forth to the jailhouse, the moment somebody puts some money in their books and do all this stuff, I'm not, I can't. I'm not doing that. You know, <laughs> I just can't get myself involved in that no more. Because it just don't make no sense. No, I, I, it's a, I'm sorry. Call those people that all them, you gave, you had, you could have sold them tickets to the Super Bowl. But you took some niggas. With worthless niggas at that. Worthless niggas. To me. I'm like, nigga, you just, you flossing. I would have took them out and sold them tickets. I don't know how he got them. Never get to, never figure that part out because he can pay for them. But he got some tickets to the Super Bowl, he should have sold them. Then he didn't have a hundred dollars to put on his book. Said he took some worthless bums down there with him. Hmm. That's just my thoughts on this. Especially if I knew I was in, in financial trouble. I'd get my hands on the Super Bowl, real Super Bowl tickets. You know what you could have sold them tickets for? And you wouldn't be in his position right now. Because he went to jail for driving his car with his suspended insurance. Insurance was suspended. The tag was suspended. And they found out he had a warrant for his arrest. They pulled him over because his tag and insurance had expired. He had no insurance on the vehicle. They pulled him over and they come to find out there was a warrant for his arrest for probation violation or something like this. I don't, you know, I really don't care really don't care. But anyway, that was just my thoughts. I thought about that that meme, that quote I saw that enemies are, are friends are just enemies under construction. I think there's a lot of truth to that. 
You know, it's unfortunate, but, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that's just my thoughts and opinions. Um, today is Wednesday, August the 14th. The year is 2019. And um, you ought to get out and do something really great with your day today. And I'll be back later on with another video today.